Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel at Unicorns and Typewriters. My name is Skylar and I'm back today with an exciting video. I first just want to, you know, give a little shout out to the premiere of my forehead on this channel. I've had bangs since I started filming and I still do. They just weren't cooperating for me at all today. Let's start a vote below whether or not I should grow out bangs. You know, the age old question to have bangs or not to have bangs. <laughs> right now I still like mine, but you know, once in a while they annoy me and I tie them back and people are shocked and confused because they're like, whoa, you have a forehead. Yeah, it happened to me at work a couple weeks ago too. So I am back today to do a September TBR video. So I wanna talk about what I want to read in the month of September. To be honest with you all, I have already read one book in this month so far, which is pretty fast for me, but I'm not actually going to talk about that book because it is not technically a TBR since I've already read it. And it is also part of a book haul that I want to do in another video, so I don't want to spoil the surprise of some of the new books I got. But this one book in particular, as soon as it arrived in the mail, I read it in one sitting. So off to a strong start this month, am I right? So I wanted to start out by mentioning two of the books that I am already reading that I'm going to definitely be finishing this month. I'm pretty determined anyway. And that is I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. I just about have like a quarter of this book left. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. It's a really cute contemporary romance that is based around K-dramas and if you know K-dramas, they are Korean dramas and there are a ton of them on Netflix and that is how I got into them in the past couple of years. And I absolutely love K-dramas now. I can't like rant about them enough. I wish more people would watch them. I know a lot of people, at least that I know in the States, won't watch them because they don't like watching subtitled things. But if you can deal with the subtitles, they're so amazing and you get a taste of a culture that is so different from our own. And I don't know, I think people are just so narrow minded sometimes and not wanting to just like read a few subtitles. But anyway, this book is so much fun and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm excited to read more books like this in the future, either by Maureen Gooks. I know she has a few more. Or since I got this book, I found out that there are quite a few authors actually out there who write about K-dramas and about characters who love K-dramas. So now it's like a whole little niche I'm gonna get into. <laughs> the other book is Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angelis. If you know my channel and you've been watching, you know I've been kind of struggling to get into this book, but I'm still really excited about it and I really hope that I'll get to finish it this month. It has Phantom of the Opera kind of influence and kind of circus influence, which are two things that are really up my alley. But I don't know, like just the start of it's been a little rocky for me. So I hope you guys will stay tuned to find out what I think of this book, hopefully at the end of this month. So for the rest of the books, the books that I have not started yet, there are definitely some that will be coming in the mail that I will probably want to read like as soon as they arrive. And one of those is Orange, the second collection. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I read the first collection of Orange and I really, really loved it. It is a manga series. There are so far two collections and then one sort of final book, I think. I've heard that there is talk about another book coming out, um, but I'm not exactly sure if that's like finalized or if that's just a rumor. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard about that. But it is a really amazing story about a girl who gets a letter from her future self basically telling her that if she doesn't do something to change events in her current time, then someone that she really cares about is going to die. So it's pretty intense and I really, really like it so far. It's a very slice of life kind of manga, but it's got these concepts of like time travel, parallel universes. It's got that kind of touch of magic that I really love. So this series is highly addictive. The second collection is extremely hard to find, but I finally found a copy of it, purchased it, ordered it. So it's on its way to me and I had mentioned it last month because I thought I was gonna order it last month, but it suddenly went out of stock on like every website you could possibly find books on. Like, and I'm talking, I've searched every book website I know of, and I finally found it <laughs> at this tiny little store. It's a tiny little bookstore that is on an island on the other side of the United States than the side that I live on, on an island, like that obscure. And I found this store and they had a copy of it and I bought it. <laughs> 
so they're mailing it to me I'm waiting for it I cannot wait to get this book and I know as soon as I get it I'm gonna want to read it immediately so that I think I will definitely be reading this month and some of the other books that I will talk about in a future book haul are also some books I might need to pick up this month but I don't want to spoil the book haul right now so I'm gonna talk about some other books that I also would like to read this month because I like I've said in the past I do really want to mix in some old and new books. So a book that I have now had I believe I've had this book for about a year now but it is the newest book by this author and that is All the Bad Apples by Maura Fally Doyle and she is a favorite of mine. I'm kind of obsessed with her writing. She wrote The Accident Season and The Spellbook of the Lost and Bound and I just love her writing. All of her books take place in Ireland, which is where she is from. I follow her on social media. I think she is like the coolest person ever. And I kind of want to be her when I grow up. I'm just saying. Um, but she's really cool. And I've been saving this book now for a while. Because honestly, it just felt like a fall read. Like it it's just the perfect fall read. All of her books are like perfect for fall to be honest. I need to read this at some point this fall and I'm thinking I might just have to pick it up this month because as you can see if you can notice that I have my Nightmare Before Christmas t-shirt on right now. I don't know like if you guys can see well but it's Jack Skellington on my shirt of course. Um, I am like in the fall spirit. I'm in the spooky spirit. Like it is time. I've started celebrating Halloween. I can't help it. Like it's my favorite holiday and so as soon as fall hits I'm like all Halloween all the time. So I think it sounds really cool. It's got feminist and LGBTQ themes. It is about a girl and kind of her coming of age story and it also definitely will have some themes of kind of underlying themes of magic because all of her books do and I think it's just that perfect like magical realism where you like can't quite tell if it's magic or not but it's like it's so cool you just have to read her work to understand the next book that i want to read this month i talked about in my last uh book haul that i did for the month of august i'm so ready to read this one laura dean keeps breaking up with me by rosemary valero o'connell and mariko tamaki this book won a prince award for excellence in young adult literature which is obviously a big deal. It is a graphic novel. It is so cool. I talked about it a bit in my last video, but it is like illustrated in black and pink only, if you can see that well. And I think it is just such a cool concept. And I don't know. I just, I love the way it looks. I love the style. I'm excited to read it. It is about a girl who um, is in love with someone who just keeps breaking up with her. And I've read kind of the inside before I think in my last video but it's kind of about toxic relationships which is something that really fascinates me and letting go of those toxic relationships. So I'm just so pumped to read this one and I don't think I'm going to be able to wait much longer to dive into it. The next book that has been on my mind for a while is a former Owl Crate book and that is a winter wood by shay earnshaw so last year i actually picked up and read the wicked deep which is by the same author and i really liked it i was at a bookstore i saw it i left it the next time i was at a bookstore i had to buy it the wicked deep this one then surprised me by coming in an outcrate box before i had gotten around to reading the wicked deep so i read the wicked deep last year and i just like haven't gotten back around to reading this one but I really, really want to. I really liked her writing style. I thought that The Wicked Deep was such a beautiful, mysterious, and kind of witchy-vibed book. It was so cool. And this one, once again, has very witchy vibes to it. It sounds like it's got magic and witches, and it takes place in, like, haunted woods, kind of. I don't know, or cursed woods. So basically, it sounds amazing. And of course, the Alcrate edition is beautiful. It's got the blue suede edges and it's just gorgeous copy and it's signed and I love it. <laughs> so I really would like to read this book this month. I want to get in the Halloween spirit. I want to read some witchy fun books this month. And I think this just has to be one of them. And another book that is on my radar for this month is Tiff by Holly Black. I talked about this as well in my last video. It was part of my haul back in August. I found this entire series at a bookstore, the old covers, the original edition covers, 
and I really like them and I think they're spooky and cool looking and I just love the style of these covers and so I was so so happy to find them. I would have eventually bought the new editions but I don't know why in the back of my mind I just kept searching for these old editions hoping I would find them one day and that day finally arrived last month. So I'm really excited to give this book a read. It is about dark fairies um, similarly to her Cruel Prince Wicked King and Queen of Nothing series. This supposedly, I think, takes place in the same world, but a different time, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not really sure, but I know it is still Holly Black's, like, fairies, and so it has to be awesome. I know it is also an earlier work of hers, so it might not, like, be the same. It might not be as good. I'm not sure, but I'm just really, really excited to read it. I love her dark style of writing, and I've just gotten really into her writing in the past couple of years since about, I think, two years ago I read The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, and that was the first Holly Black book I read, and I loved it, which is a spin on vampires that kind of treats vampirism like a pandemic, which is what we're facing now, which is interesting. So if you haven't read that one yet, I highly suggest it. It's really good, and it's very of the times at this current moment, but her dark fairies are just so cool. So I'm really excited to delve into more books related to her fairies and that world that she has created and those rules and everything. So yeah, and I'm also excited to see where she started because she inspires me and as another writer, it's really interesting to see other writers' growth. And getting into the spirit of the spooky season, another book that I would like to try to read this month is Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stifewater. I've been talking about this series since the beginning of the year. As you all know, if you've been watching my channel, if not, I read the first book in the series last year at the very, very end of last year. I read the second book at the beginning of this year, and I just haven't gotten back into the series since. I really need to. The second book put me off a little bit. I just didn't find it as interesting as the first book, so I'm hoping that I'm able to, like, jump back in and get more excited about this series again. In the past, I've always said Maggie Stiefwater is one of my favorite authors, so I feel like kind of a horrible person that I haven't gotten through this series yet, but I hope I will get to, and I can tell you guys how I feel about it overall if I do end up miraculously finishing this series, but for now, I'm just gonna say maybe I'll read the next book this month. I'll keep my TBR as realistic as possible, and then if I exceed that realism, I will be very excited. But yeah, I have a lot of reading to catch up on, and I really hope I will be able to do that this month. Like I said, I have some really exciting book hauls, I think, coming up. I also will be getting the Owlcrate box this month. This month's box is like the Halloween box. They always do it in September so that you have it for the month of October, which makes sense. So I'm so excited for the Halloween-themed box. Like I said, if you know me at all, you know that Halloween is my favorite holiday, and I absolutely love it literally everything about it. So I really hope that you will all look forward to those videos and I will definitely be back next week with another video. I hope you are all staying safe and healthy and that you have a good rest of your week. Bye!